Anyone who knows me knows I love music, and I take it pretty serious. Uh, I built uh, this speaker you see here and a matching one on the other side. There's a couple subwoofers down here you can just see the tops of. Uh, with the help of a couple friends, I, I built those. I arranged my office so that my chair is in the prime listening spot, right in, in the middle of those, and I end a lot of days just listening to music. Again, I, I really like it, and I think God's people have always liked music and, and realize, and God realizes how important it is. That's why an entire book of the Bible is the hymn book of the Old Testament. I'm talking about the book of Psalms. Uh, in one sense, you could consider it the original Christian music channel. Well, I hope you like this video over a psalm, and if so, then uh, if you do me a favor and click the thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, I always love that, and or share it on a social media site like Facebook, that would be a huge help. Thanks a lot. What causes you to be afraid? I'm guessing the answer is not what you think. That's a different question than what are you afraid of. You know, for that, your answer might be like many people, uh, fear of the dark or speaking in public or snakes. But that's not what causes you to be afraid. You know, think about it. Are you afraid of a snake if that's your fear? Are you afraid of a snake right now? I'm guessing the answer is no. Why? Because you trust there's not a snake around you. You're, you're really trusting in the distance between you and the nearest snake. But if you would see a snake, then that fear would kick in. Well, what's that say about what really causes you to be afraid? It's when what you're trusting in goes away. What's this mean for us as believers? Well, we face difficult situ situations in life, things that are trials and struggles, and you know, we wonder how it's going to turn out. We're afraid of how it might turn out. It shakes us. Psalms 56 and 62, they overlap in a sense as they talk about uh, our fear, and our faith. And we're going to look at them the next few videos here. Psalm 56 verses 3 and 4 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. Well, there's, there's a couple implications from those two verses. The first one is, there will be times when we are afraid. He says there, when I am afraid. A, a devoted follower of God We'll be afraid sometimes. Things will hit us, and our first response will be to be shaken, to be have fear, you know, that knot in the pit of our stomach. But there's another implication as well from these verses. You notice he says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Well, that means before he was afraid, his trust to some degree wasn't in God. It wasn't there, and that's what led to him. That's what caused him to be afraid. Whatever his trust was in went away. It proved to be not enough. Well, what are some of our alternatives? He lists in Psalm 62, riches. Sometimes we think, if I have enough money, uh, enough resources, I'll be able to weather any storm. You know, it says in verse 10 of Psalm 62, put no trust in extortion, set no vain hopes on robbery. Good. If riches increase, set not your heart on them, or however it comes about. And he makes the point in verse 9, because those of low estate are but a breath, those of high estate are a delusion. In the balance they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Now, can riches, you know, finances, wealth help us weather some storms? Yes, but there comes a, a limit that even those don't help with, with our health certainly facing death, relationship issues. No, but it's so tempting to put our trust in them or to put our, our trust in, in maybe our, our power that we have, you know, from our whatever position we have. I have enough influence to deal with this. Can it help? Yes. Will there be times when it's not enough? Yes. And if our trust is in them, we'll be afraid. You know, sometimes I think what we put our trust in as believers are, are some limit. You know, God, I know I'm going to face difficulties. I know I'm going to face trials, but I trust it won't be too bad. It won't be in this area. It won't last that long. And then it does. And we realize I was trusting in those things, not God. Or at the very least, I was trusting in God and those things. And that's why it right, he says in Psalm 62, verse 5, For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from Him. That's a key thing. Sometimes we're trusting in God and something else, and really it's more the something else, because when that goes away, the fear sets in, which tells us I wasn't trusting in God. So what do we need to do? 
when we face these? Well, first of all, I, I do need to realize fear is the natural response, even for a follower of God. My first gut reaction, I, I may well be afraid. But then I need to examine why was that? What was I trusting in in some way that you know I fell back into, I didn't realize, I got in there, Satan's always going to find the, the, the area where we're weak and examine what was I trusting in either in addition to God or really besides God in place of God. Now, I don't know if I'll ever be able to remove the fear of snakes from someone by all the Bible verses in the world. I do have an eternal perspective, but if you've got it, that's a tough one. But when life throws us some difficulties, when there's challenges and we don't see how we can overcome them, it's still possible not to be afraid. What more do we need to do? Well, we'll see that in the next video.